Today we're talking about four reasons why you need to use the Wave Studio Rack in your sessions, and we'll get to that all after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer, and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button, Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know how new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we're talking about the Wave Studio Rack plugin and four reasons why you need to have it in all of your sessions. So before we get to that, I do want to mention to check out audiosourcer.com and go see all the different services that I have to offer. So I have things from audio mixing to audio mastering. I also have audio editing and I do one-on-one -on -one remote teaching. So there is something there for everyone. Now, I also have a blog there, which is free to subscribe to, where I offer different tips and techniques that I teach on there that I don't have on my YouTube channel. So it's definitely worth checking out. So I also want to mention, if you guys do end up liking the Wave Studio Rack, that I have a link in the description below to the Wave's website in which you can get 10% off any Wave's purchase. Now, yes, this plugin is free, but... If you find any other plugins on the Waves website that you like, feel free to use my coupon code that is available via this link. Okay, now that is all out of the way, let's get to the first reason why you need to have the Wave Studio Rack in all of your sessions, which is... The first reason why you should use the Wave Studio Rack in all of your sessions is because it now has support for VST3 plugins beyond just Waves plugins, which is great because now we can combine different manufacturer plugins and create some awesome plugin chains like we normally would. So when you first install the plugin or update it, you're gonna have an option to scan your computer for VST3 plugins. And if by chance you don't, you can simply go up to this hamburger icon here in the top right, click on that, and then go down to VST3, and then click on Scan Plugins. Now, if it's not scanning the right folder, go down to Set Plugins folder here, and go to Custom Folder, and then you can select the folder that it will scan. Now, what this will look like is, if you go to the plus button here in one of the rack slots, your first section here is all of your Waves plugins, and they're broken down by categories. And then you can go down to the VST3 section here, and these are actually broken down by manufacturers, okay? So that is what this looks like. So that is the first reason why you should be using the Wave Studio Rack in all of your sessions. So let's move on to reason number two. So the second reason why we want to use the Wave Studio Rack in all of our sessions is probably the most obvious, which is organization we can put all of our plugins in this one plugin here, and we would then just have one insert on all of our tracks. So our session's gonna look really clean. Now, yes, we have to open up this one plugin to see all the other plugins being used on a track, but it's worth it for organization purposes. So what I really like about this in Pro Tools is that we can then actually get rid of inserts F through J because that actually makes our mix window a lot longer looking than we'd like it to be. So if we go up to the Views tab at the top here, click on that, go down to Mix Window Views, we can actually close F through J here, and then any plugins that we had on F through J, we can now put into our Wave Studio Rack, and we are good to go. So the Wave Studio Rack offers eight inserts here, as you can see. And if we ever go over that, we still would have four available up here, giving us 12. So then we don't have to worry about F through J because 12 should be plenty for you. You should never have to go over 12 on any track. If you do, you're probably doing something wrong, okay? So that's the second reason why you would want to use the Wave Studio Rack. So let's move on to the third reason. So reason number three you would want to use the Wave Studio Rack in all of your sessions is because you can create your own custom multiband processing. So if you want to create a multiband compressor, a limiter, or anything else you can think of, you can do it with the Wave Studio Rack. So this is great if you don't own a multiband compressor plugin. You can create your own with this plugin here using just a standard compressor. So let me actually show you how to do that. So the first thing we'll do so we'll go to rack slot one here. We'll hit the plus button. 
And then we'll go down to multi-band split here. And by default, you're gonna get two bands here. So each one of these rack slots is a band. And by default, the first band here is 92 hertz and below, and the second band is 92 hertz and above. So a typical multi-band compressor is usually four bands. So why don't we add two more bands? We'll hit this plus button here, and we'll hit it again. Now we got four bands. And as you can see, the crossover points here are 545 hertz and then 4,000. So I don't really like those. I don't know, maybe we'll make this like 2K, and we'll make this one like I don't know, 5K. So there, it's as simple as changing your crossover points by just typing in a value there, okay? Now, we have it set up here, but we don't actually have a compressor inserted yet. So if we go to the first band here, hit the plus on the first insert, uh, we'll go down to dynamics and the waves plugins here. I'll just pick a waves one. I uh, will do H comp. So here's our H comp compressor. Now, if I want to just use H comp for all of them, which I'm just gonna do that, I'll hold Alt on my computer uh, keyboard and I'll just drag it on over. And as you can see, it's a very simple. It's just basically copying and pasting it over. So now I just created a multi-band compressor with crossover points in 92 Hertz, 2K and 5K using the H comp all with the Wave Studio Rack. That is pretty darn cool, all right? So that is reason number three, that we can create our own multiband processing all with the Wave Studio Rack. All right, so let's move on to our last reason, reason number four. All right, so the last and final reason why you would want to use the Wave Studio Rack in all of your sessions is because you can utilize parallel processing all within this plugin and you don't have to use a mix knob. It will actually allow you to split the signal into multiple signal flows, which is really cool. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we go to the first insert here, click on that, and we go down to parallel split, you're gonna see that it split this into one and two here. Now, the first slot here really is just your main flow here. So if you're looking at the inserts here, one through eight from top to bottom, this is really just insert one here. Now the second one here, this is what I consider your parallel slot here. So to activate this here, we need to actually click on the two and then we can actually put our parallel processing in the inserts here. And then we're gonna use this knob here, the volume knob to actually blend in the parallel processing with our main signal, okay? So I have this on a kick bus now, which is just kick drums, it's a stereo bus. So what we could do is maybe we add a transient shaper in or something, and I'll let you hear what that sounds like. So let's use, I don't know, Smack Attack from Waves. Let's do that. And we'll just pick a preset. So we'll go down to Drums. We'll go down to Kick the Sun. And uh, let me actually mix this in with this knob here. So let's give it a listen. All right, so it's as simple as that. Actually, Smack Attack actually kind of cleaned up the kick drum a little bit there. It was actually a little less messy sounding when we put that on there, so pretty cool. So that's all you have to do to actually add parallel processing using the Wave Studio Rack here. Now, a little advice here, I would actually probably, you know, do all of my processing in here first, and then on my last insert, whichever number that would be, so let's say I got down to maybe number six here, I would do my parallel processing on that last insert here, okay? So I like to treat my track after I've fully processed it, okay? So that is our last and final reason there why you should use the Wave Studio Rack in all of your sessions. All right, so those are the four reasons why I believe that the Wave Studio Rack plugin should be in all of your sessions. So if you guys end up liking this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe so I'm making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know when videos coming out. And if you guys enjoyed this content, definitely check out my review slash tutorial on the Waves SSL EV2. And with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.